Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, doctors, and my fellow colleagues, me, Dr. Imrul Hassan, assistant professor and head of the medicine unit four, Department of Medicine, Mansi Medical College, welcoming you at the BIMSCON 2020, organized by the IFMSA Bangladesh. Actually, it's a great privilege and to be honored here as a facilitator of this session. I am now briefly introducing myself. Me, passed from the Mansi Medical College, January 1996, under the University of Dhaka. Then I went through the FCPS medicine exam and I passed in 2004, July. Then I uh, been through the MD Neurology course in Bangabandhu Sheikh Medieval Medieval University in 2007. Actually, today's my topic of discussion is the neurological emergency. It is a very much important and less understood topics nowadays. But regarding this, if we become the cautiously optimistic and compassionate, we can diagnose it and we can manage it properly. So, as a facilitator, I'm starting my topics, neurological emergency. Next slide. What is the definition? Actually, definition signifies it. It defined as a condition which is life-threatening or in which the patient faced with poor functional recovery unless treated promptly. If we don't promptly treat it, there is poor functional recovery. Second point is the life-threatening condition. Next slide. Now, what we learn, what we want to learn from it, neurological emergency, what we learn from it? Actually, it's a significant public health burden created by the neurological emergency. I want to diagnose and treat the neurological emergencies. Be familiar with the differential diagnosis of that neurological emergency with diagnostic and mostly therapeutic approach. Next slide. Now, what is the clinical and economic relevance of neurological emergency? If you go through the emergency department of every tertiary level or in a uh, grassroots level, it's an emergency care burden all over the world. Five to 15% of all emergency de department visits non-traumatic neurological problem. And 20% of non-surgical admission are for neurological problem. Next slide. Now, what is the goal? What is the goal of neurological emergency? Goal one, don't let the patient die. Goal two, preserve as much as nervous system tissue as possible. We want to prompt diagnosis and we will go for the definite diagnostic and therapeutic approach to serve for survival benefit of the patient, number one. Second is the preserve the nervous system tissue as much as possible. Next slide. Now, what is the commonest neurological emergency we encounter in our day-to-day -day practice? First one is the most important one is the stroke. Second is the status epilepticus. Third is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Fourth, fever and confusion that may presented with meningitis. It may be bacterial, it may be viral, encephalitis, cerebral abscess. Next. Weakness and difficulty in breathing, it mostly Gulenbari syndrome, myasthenic crisis, cervical cord lesion, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, acute intracranial hypertension. Now, this is the most important 
for the for our doctors for our level students for junior doctors particularly why neurological emergencies are complex you know cns is exquisitely vulnerable to ischemia and hypoxia normal cerebral blood flow is 50 to 100 ml per 100 gram per minute but in case of ischemia when there is ischemic change it reduced to 20 ml per 100 gram but when will be infarction the tissue will be damaged it is the 10 ml per 100 gram per minute but what is the most important consideration is the as the cns heals poorly tissue that dies are not replaced and function never return to normal this is the most important tissue that is cns does not heal properly and it heals poorly so what is dying or what is died that did not be replaced and the function never returns to normal now treatment depends on the rapid and accurate the neurological diagnosis that requires the most important thing is the unique training and experience if you see a patient if you trained with it then you, in that case you can only diagnose and attention to detail as many as one third of the patient with neurological concentration are in the emergency department misdiagnosed so in that case proper and meticulous training expertise is mostly needed now how to approach to this case most important thing when you approach the neurological emergency first in the emergency department or in my ward or in a tertiary level hospital you must ensure the a b c this is the most important now the next is the blood pressure and the oxygen saturation that may exacerbate the cns injury heart is the hypercapnia very important it elevates the intracranial pressure now what is the essential or key elements for diagnosis first is the onset time is the key when you have last time seen the patient normal that is important and what is the temporal profile of the symptom is it paroxysmal is it minutes is it hours or is it days now we want to physically examine the patient what is the mental status particularly level of arousal i want to examine the cranial lobes i want to examine the motor system particularly if there is monoparesis is there is hemiparesis we want to see the jerks reflex and the, what is the posture of this patient now i want to examine the sensory system i want to examine the reflexes cerebellar system and we consider mini mental state examination if there is psychological components are there now what is the investigation modalities we clinically examine now we will go for the investigation firstly we will go for the labs all over the world we go for the labs particularly is the blood sugar level very important then we will go for the complete blood count in case of meningitis encephalitis then we will go for the electrolyte particularly serum sodium concentration then go for the liver function particularly uh, activated partial thromboplastin time prothrombin time then we will go for the kidney function blood urea nitrogen and the serum creatinine now you amazing very important is the non contrast ct it is first investigation i mean it is widely available now lastly we will go for the cerebral spinal fluid study and we'll go for the infection we'll go for the subarachnoid hemorrhage we'll go to diagnose the guillain syndrome now what is the managing the neurological crisis that's the most important issue it should be managed in the true emergency in the intensive care unit particularly in case of status epilepticus that is very much important myasthenic crisis that is very much important it must be managed in the intensive care unit but in case of stroke in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage that must be managed in the stroke unit very important what are you uh, uh, cautious 
regarding the complication of this uh, illness, particularly in stroke, in subarachnoid hemorrhage, there is altered level of consciousness. So patient may develop the aspiration pneumonia or some other infection. So early diagnosis and early management. Uh, we are giving you some of the brief uh, guidelines regarding this management. Uh, we have taken in from the Medscape Medicine Neurological Emergency. There are some um, proven and in some cases there are unproven role of steroids. It is the particularly the dexamethasone. Steroid helps in reducing the cerebral edema, particularly in case of head injury. In case of brain edema, we, use, we can use the steroid. But in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage or primary subarachnoid uh, intracerebral hemorrhage, actually there is no indication. Very important. Next, there are some studies regarding this. I think uh, this will uh, give, give us the additive information. We will go into the this. Now, most common neurological emergency regarding the stroke management. Very important. Early diagnosis is of paramount importance. Then regarding the stroke management, uh, there is uh, very important is that it must be managed in the stroke unit. I know uh, in, uh, there is a, in our city in Bangladesh, there is a specialized stroke unit in the National Institute of Neuroscience in the neurology department. So stroke unit is must for facilitating or it plays a paramount importance in stroke management. In case of stroke management, most important thing is the after ABC management, we will uh, take care of the patient's blood pressure. Very much important. We will take care of his position, we'll, which is the most, most is the, in that setting, it is most important is the neuroprotection. You know, CNS poor heal. So, which is damaged, damaged. But if you can uh, protect the further damage, that is our further goal. In that case, we'll go for the neuroprotection. On the uh, recent, there are some neuroprotective drugs we can use in the large scale and there is, in large scale study, it is seen significant reduction in disability at 90 days. So there are some drugs which have additive role in neuroprotection. We must use it. Next slide. There are some other illness. So it may be due to hepatic encephalopathy. It is two types, type A and type B. There are, uh, there is also a common medical emergency, uh, neurological emergency, sorry. Status epilepticus, status epilepticus must be managed in the uh, ICU setting. Lastly, we are giving you some home messages. Most important is that we will give some messages. You must take this home messages. What is the home messages? Time is brain. Rapid diagnosis and treatment are crucial. Airway, breathing, and circulation are important in neurological illness. In case of ischemic stroke, don't lower the blood pressure and open the blood vessel. In case of hemorrhagic stroke, lower the blood pressure and correct the coagula pathies. In case of subarachnoid hemorrhage, lower the blood pressure carefully and secure the aneurysm. Thank you all.